Right, I think we are live as always. Good afternoon, thank you very much for joining me, or good morning wherever you are. Good evening, possibly, if you're somewhere east of here. Welcome to another solo playthrough. Uh, this is Star Wars Outer Rim. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me and see me okay. Star Wars Outer Rim. Uh, whenever there is a list of games on any kind of discussion group, Facebook forum or whatever, where people say, pick a game that absolutely desperately needs an expansion, this is always very, very high up on the list. Now, I'd love an expansion for this game, but I think the game is still great. Now, bear in mind, I have only played this about four or five times. I know the people that have played it 10 or 15 times said they're a bit bored of it now. They've seen everything in the game, but I, I really like it. So, the reason I'm doing this today is I'm not at UK Games Expo, believe it or not. This is, this is not UK Games Expo. I was going to be going to UK Games Expo. I'm not able to. Uh, so I'm staying at home and doing a series of live streams instead. I did two yesterday, three yesterday. Uh, I've got a few more today. Star Wars Outer Rim is the first one. And every month, as part of my Patreon campaign, uh, I put up a list of games and my Patreon supporters vote on which game they want to see me play solo. Now, I do a number of solo playthroughs every month, but one of them, at least, is voted on by Patreon supporters. Uh, and this month, they voted on Star Wars Outer Rim which I am very, very happy for. I mean, I only had to bribe 60 of them uh, to say Star Wars Outer Rim because I, I love this game. I really, really do enjoy this game. Um, and a lot of people who know the kind of games that I traditionally like will be thinking, well, why do you love this game? <laughs> because surely it's not a Euro game and it's not a Euro game and it has dice for resolution in it, but this game captures the Star Wars feel for me. This is not an official uh, sponsored tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to jump in. We're going to start playing. And I've decided that I'm going to be playing that I need to get 12 fame. Okay, now normally you try to get 10. 10 is what you need to win. I've decided, rightly or wrongly, I'm going to play to 12 fame. So it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a longer game. But also my opponent, which is Jin Erso, starts with one fame. So I've customized the game a little bit. If I do win... I have a Jaffa Cake bar given to me by James, um, I was going to call him James Magnate then, James Naylor, designer of Magnate, who is at the UK Games Expo, who sent me a gift, uh, not just this, he sent me a lot of them, because I couldn't make it. Anyway, right, thank you very much to everybody for joining me. Uh, one last thing before we start, uh, turn on your Klingon subtitles. Uh, there aren't any Klingon subtitles right now, but if somebody watches this video afterwards and says, Paul, at 1 hour 16 minutes you did this wrong, uh, then I will add Klingon subtitles to it. Because um, I don't like doing videos where I end up making a mistake, which does happen sometimes, um, and I want that information to get to you. Right, okay. You're still waiting on your Jaffa Cakes arriving, says Brett. Okay, so let's go through what we've got. As I say, it's not an official tutorial, but for those of you that don't know the game, uh, let's explain what this is. Each player has a character, okay? Where's that coming from? That's going to bug me. There you go. Uh, so I've got... IG-88. Now I randomly decided this. You can you can choose characters or you can decide randomly. I think there's eight characters in the game. So I've got IG-88. IG uh, this is my uh, combat skill when I'm fighting in close combat. This is how much health I've got. I shouldn't have that. That's a leftover from last night. I have a special ability. Uh, I have an action that I can do and I have a personal goal. The idea of the game, as I mentioned, is to get to it's normally 10, but I'm going to play to 12. And there's multiple ways of this game to get, multiple ways in this game to get fame. It's very much a sandbox, sandbox game. You can do all sorts of different things. You can smuggle goods. You can try and get bounties. You can go on missions. You can do all sorts of different things. That shouldn't be there either. Um, I did do a, a test game last night uh, where I was relearning how to play. So some of the cards are left over from that, as you can see. That shouldn't be there either. <laughs> I think everything else is there. Everything else is, is good and okay. Where should this go? Uh, this should go there. Right, okay. Um, I start with, uh, you start with one ship. You either start with G1A Starfighter or the G9 Rigger. I've decided to start with the G1A Starfighter, uh, which has got slightly slower, but it's got a little bit more in attack. And the first player, which is always you in a solo game, uh, starts with 4,000 credits. Um... And I also start with a job. You see here on my starting card, it says set up card 90. So this is a data link card. This is card number 90. Uh, there's four of them in the game. So basically I chose one of the card 90s at random uh, and I have a bounty. So it tells me my starting planet, which is Ryloth, and I have a bounty. 
to get Lobot, this guy. You may recognize him from the films. Um, so I've got to go and find him, and then I can either eliminate him or capture him. If I capture him, I get more, more rewards. But basically, that's my initial bounty that I've got. Uh, I'm playing against Jin Urso. So you pick, you pick an, another character to play against. Um, I chose one at random. We're playing against Jin Urso. Uh, that shouldn't be there. Again, that's left over from last night. Um, now, you can't play against all of the other characters. It has to be a character whose setup card is either 91 or 92. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I've chosen that one at random, and that, that's a legitimate one to take. As the second player, uh, Jin starts with 6,000 credits, and this is the AI deck of cards. And before any of you say, I know these are the slightly the wrong size sleeves for the cards, but they're, they're all I had at the time. So that's the AI deck. I'm going to put that there. Uh, Jin also starts with the ship, and they also they choose the G9 rigger to start with. Um, and uh, Jin's reputation with the Imperials is down one because it says that on the setup card. And Jin's job is pirate trouble. Destination Nal Hutter. Now her starting location is Ord Mantel. Um, get the hat hair out of the way. And she's got to go to Nal Hutter and do this job. So what we do is we mark Nal Hutter with a goal marker. Uh, and the AI will always try to move towards their closest goal. Right. <laughs> Scott is expecting me to make a mistake at precisely 1 hour 16 minutes. Well, if you can give me a reminder at that time, I'll make a rules mistake and then add the Klingon subtitles in. We have the market decks here. I have a camera zoom in on the market decks. Uh, the six different types of cards uh, and the top card is always face up. The rest of the cards are face down. We'll go more onto them later on, but basically they are things that you can buy. You can buy cargo. There's two different types of cargo. Um, so let's put the cargo together. There you go. Uh, two different types of cargo. There's a new type of ship. You can buy gear to make yourself better, and there's bounties and there's jobs. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll come onto that later on. Uh, and then we've got the board. So we're using the default setup for the board. It is modular, as uh, you might be able to see. But this is the recommended configuration. There is a variant where you can shuffle these together and have a, a random variation. But we've, we've not gone with that. Um, and I think we're ready. We're going we're gonna to make a start and see how much I remember. As I say, this isn't a sponsored video. Uh, so apologies if I do make any rules gaffes. And occasionally, I might need to refer to the rule book during the game. But this is a just for fun playthrough. Kenneth's popped in. Kyle's here. Eric's here. Mark's here. Steffi's here. Paul's here. James is here. Uh, Sean is here, Andrew's here, Marco's here. Well, Marco's not here, Marco's doing house chores. Um, <laughs> but he popped in to say hello for a bit. Anyway, we're going to make a start. So, on your turn, uh, there's player aids that come with the game that are really useful. Um, first of all, there is the planning step where I can choose to do one of three things. One of which is heal, recover my damage. Another one is to gain 2,000 credits, and another one is to move. So I'm going to move. Now let's have a look at what I've got to start with. My, my bounty, as I say, is to find Lobot. Now, Lobot, you see here, has got one little dot on it. And if you look carefully at these contacts, they come in three classes. You've got white, green, and yellow. So I know that Lobot is one of the white ones, but I don't know where. So basically, I'm going to be traveling around looking for him uh, and then either eliminating him or capturing him. So that, that's probably, that gives me a direction. Um, now, I've started on Rightloth, and there is one of those contacts here. There's one there. What I don't want to do is I don't want to travel all the way down here, not find him, and then realise he's here. So I think my overall plan is to head here, to this end of the outer rim, and then start progressing that way. And you'll you'll do things on the way. Um, so my movement for my ship is five, and you move from these one spot to another. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four. I am now on the ring of Catherine. And that is the planning step done. Now I do the action step. So in the action step, there are multiple different actions that you can do. You can do each different action once in any order you want. One of them is to deliver cargo or bounties. Well, I don't have any of that yet. Uh, another one is the market action, if on a planet. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. Let's have a look at the market. So when you do the market action, this is one of the things I like about the game, is I can buy any one of these cards if I have the money in the top right, but you can always barter. So if I had something that was worth... 3,000, I could swap it for the jetpack and only pay the difference, okay? Um, I only have 4,000 credits, so I can't buy this, I can't buy that, I could buy this, I can't buy that. But once you've chosen a deck, you can actually take a card, you can cycle the cards. So you can take the card, 
put it to the bottom of the deck and reveal a new one. Uh, and then you can buy that one. Now with 4,000 4, crates, I'm probably not going to be able to buy a ship. I could buy this cargo. Now this cargo is salvage, which needs to go to Mon Calamari. So let's have a look at where Mon Calamari is. Okay, it's over there. So that's not going to be an easy job. I could take a bounty or a job. Now we look at this job. It requires knowledge, stealth, and tactics. Okay. Now I've got none of them. So that isn't a really good job for me, right? I've got strength and tech. So that for me is not a good job. But what I could do is I could decide to cycle this card and put it to the bottom. Now I think, and I'm just going to check on this, but I think you can cycle a card to the bottom of the deck, but then buy from a different one. I don't think you're forced to buy a card from the deck that you cycled. I'm pretty sure, because otherwise that would be silly. Market action, yeah. Regardless of whether or not you discard a card, you may choose to buy one card. It can be the top card of any market deck. In bold. So, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to cycle this job to the bottom. Kyle says yes. Okay, so yeah, that, jo that job is going to the bottom. We're going to reveal a new one. And this job is hijacking a freighter. Now, this is a really difficult job. It would ideally like piloting, strength, tech, tactics, and ship combat. Right, now, I've got tech... And I've got strength. Now, the other thing with these jobs is if any of them are in italics, you really need them. Okay, so if you have any of these, they will be a benefit. But if it's in italics, you've really got to have it in order to be able to succeed at the scenario. I think that's how it works, or they're more important. So I could take this one. It looks quite difficult to do. Oh, I cannot buy on the Ring of Caffeine. Okay, right. Well, let, let's just put that one there then. <laughs> so instead... Do we want a bounty to eliminate Chewbacca? Now, that's that's a crazy one to take at this stage, because if you look at Chewbacca's combat strength, it's six. If you look at my combat strength, it's three. So that's for later on in the game, when I've got, like, you know, Mandalorian armor or <laughs> something crazy. Um, so that's quite dangerous to take as well. I don't know whether I want any of these cards. I could pick up this cargo, the salvage, but it, I need to drop it off at Mon, Cal Mon Calamari. And I'm kind of not going in that real direction. So I don't think I'm going to buy anything. After all that, I'm not going to buy anything. Okay, right. Next. Uh, trade cards with a player in your space. I'm playing the solo game today. I like the solo game of this, but the multiplayer game, although it takes quite a bit longer, um, the multiplayer game is great because you can actually have players trading stuff with each other. Um, if, 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 if another player has um, a particular crew member that I've got a bounty on, then I can go to them and I can actually have a fight with them to try and get that crew member off them. Yeah, the multiplayer, the way the interaction works in the multiplayer game of this, I really like. Again, very, very thematic. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do any of that. I can't deliver cargo, I'm not delivering a bounty. I've decided not to do a market action. And we now go to the encounter step. So in the encounter step, I either fight a patrol, resolve an encounter card, or resolve a contact token. So that's what I'm going to do. We are going to resolve this contact token. We're going to have a look at it. And it is Pondo Baba. So that is card number 20. So we go to the data bank. And we get card number 20. Which is not here. Because I used it last night. Where have I put it? I've probably put it back in... Oh, there it is. Card number 20. And the number of dots on the card tells you how many cards there are of that number in the deck. So if there was more than one, you would pick one of them at random. So as it is... Pondo Baba, he doesn't like you, but a few credits may change his mind. So I, I'm testing strength. Uh, let's put it on my board here. So I'm testing strength. If I fail, I suffer two damage. But whether I pass or fail, I can spend 3,000 to make him part of my crew. And when he's part of my crew, I get this benefit here. And I get strength. Now, I've already got strength. But if you have a, if you have a skill twice, that actually gives you uh, a better bonus. But first thing is, I've got to test strength. So whenever you test, you roll two dice. It's always two dice. But whether you succeed or not depends on whether you are unskilled, skilled, or is it very skilled? Highly skilled. You can see here on the player aid. So because I have strength, I am skilled, which means if I roll a critical or a hit, I have passed the test. So let's roll and see what we get. Okay, so I rolled a hit, which means I have passed the test. So I have a bit of a fight with him. 
Uh, I win the fight, I don't take any damage, and now do I want him as part of my crew? I'm going to say yes. I don't know why, but I'm going to say yes. I'm, I'm, this is the kind of game where, you know, a Euro game, you play it, and you play it as optimal as you can, right? In this game, I kind of don't care. I'm playing a Star Wars game that's fun to play. I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying flying around the galaxy and meeting people and doing stuff. So, yeah. This isn't a member of my crew. You can see here I can only have one crew on my ship. So that is my crew. You can give them up at any time. Um, and I now have an ability that during ground combat, if I have at least two focus results, I win the combat irrespect uh, regardless of my opponent's results. Okay, there we go. That is it. That is my turn done. So let's go to what uh, the AI does, what Jin does. Uh, you basically reveal the card. So we've, we're going to reveal the top card from the AI deck. And we follow this through. It says, planning step, do the first that applies. So basically, you go down the list until you get to one, which is uh, possible to apply. So recover all damage. She's not wounded, right? Move towards closest goal. So her closest goal, she's only got one goal, is Nal Hutter. Uh, she starts here, and she's got a movement of six on her ship. So she goes the closest route, which is one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Okay, now... Part of the clever rules about the AI is if you end up on a nav point, you can't really do very much if you're not on a planet. So the rules actually say that when the AI moves, if they could move one or two spaces fewer and end on a planet, they will. Now, if we look where Jin is, if she was to move two spaces fewer, she would not end on a planet. And this is this is how it works in as a as a as a as a human player. You want to try and move as far towards your destination as possible. But if you can move a little bit less and end on a planet, you probably would. And that's what the AI does. So if she can move four or five and end on a planet, she will. But to end on a planet in this particular situation, she'd only be able to move three. And she doesn't want to do that. So uh, there we go. Right. So she's ended there. Now we do the action step. So she's not at cargo. She can't buy a card from the market. I think there is no action step for her because she's in space. And then we do an encounter step. So there's no patrol on her space. Um, if at a job destination, nope. And then reveal the face down contact token of the lowest class on this planet and gain the crew on the, its card for free. Well, that's none of those. So what happens when playing the solo game when none of them apply? Let's have a look in the rule book. Um, this means that the AI resolves the top bullet if necessary. If the AI cannot resolve any of the bullets, it does nothing. So basically, it does nothing. She's flying towards a destination, didn't get there. That's the card done. That is the end of her turn. Um, I don't know if these should be shuffled when you go through them or not. Uh, oh, there's discussion going on in the chat about the, um, about the canon story of Star Wars, which is cool. And also about the Crystal Palace Football Club. How is the Crystal Palace Football Club doing? Right, it's my turn. Uh, oh, that should come off. Yeah, the contact token could should come off and be removed from the game because that contact token is, is now a crew member on my ship. Uh, so I think we need to go to Naboo because there's another white contact token there. Can I get there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I can go this way. I can go one, two, three. Yeah, I'm going to go to Naboo. So there you go. I've moved three. Now, do I want to buy something? Do I want to... Uh, do I want to take the job? Ah, right. You see, now I could take this job and it's, it's right close to me. But I only have strength and tech. I don't have tactics. I don't have ship combat. I don't have piloting. So I think that is not a good job for me to take. I mean, it's a great job. You get two fame, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And I only have 1,000 credits now. Maybe I do buy this. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm not going to cycle any cards. No, I will. I'll, I'll cycle this card. Not the football club. Are you sure not the football club? I'm going to cycle the card, and we've got... Oh, well, that's a different kind of card. That's not a job. That's crew. Now, I can't take that. Well, I could. I could get rid of my current crew, but I probably don't want to. So I am now going to buy the salvage. So I'm going to spend my 1,000 credits. 
and I'm going to buy this salvage and that goes there in the cargo spot and that means I need to go to Mon Calamari to drop it off. Now every time you buy a card you reveal a new one and this is where the patrols move. So you see here it's got three Imperial so that means the Imperial patrol moves three towards me. If it got me then there would be a fight I believe next round. I think so. But as it is, the Imperials haven't got me. So fighting these patrols is one thing that you can do. You don't have to, but you can. Again, it's very much a sandbox game. Um, so we've done that, and I am now going to resolve this contact. What is it? It is a Black Sun Agent number five. Let's have a look at the data link card. There is only one number five in there. Okay. Uh, Black Sun has agents everywhere. Their network of connections is the Syndicate's greatest strength. If you have negative Syndicate rep reputation, I do not. These are reputation tracks. I start with them all evens. So if I had negative Syndicate reputation, I would have to test stealth. And if I fail, your character suffers two damage. Again, if you think about this thematically, um, this is, you know. And that's the thing with a lot of these games. If you just read the text, you go, if you have this counter on the bottom, make a roll if you fail suffer two damage right you could just treat it as rolling dice and comparing numbers but think about it this in the theme there's a black sun agent if the syndicate don't like me then i have to sneak around it all makes sense and if i fail somebody shoots me and i suffer two damage um, if i have positive or neutral syndicate reputation i may test influence okay well i don't have the influence skill you can still do it, but the chances are slim. If you pass, gain the crew token, gain the crew below, and discard Black Sun's agent token. If you would fail, you can spend two thousand credit to pass the test instead. I think I'm just going to leave this there, because I, I mean, I could take this and replace Pondo Baba with the Black Sun agent, but I've just paid three grand for him. So I think I'm just going to leave the Black Sun Agent there. So what you can do is you can actually leave the card um, head there if you want to, but I, I'm just going to put it next to the deck there. <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, Marco, no worries, Marco. You've got other things to do. I will have a nice trip to Kessel. I'm going to do the Kessel run uh, in less than 10 parsecs. That's my plan. Is that it? I think that's my go done. Yeah, so anybody can go here now and interact with that Black Sun agent because it's face up. So now it is Jin's go. Planning step. Uh, Jin is moving towards her closest goal. And I think she gets there. She does. So she gets, she arrives at Nal Hutter. And then action step. If at cargo destination, deliver it. Nope. Uh, and then she buys and it says specifically which type of card she's going to buy. Uh, it's one of those, which is one of these. Um... I'm just going to have a look, actually. The six different types of, of thing. Have they got particular names? Yeah, cargo deck. So this is the cargo deck. This is the luxury deck. But you do find luxury cargo in the luxury deck. and you Right, okay, got it. So this officially is the cargo deck. Uh, and that's the card that she's going to buy. Now, uh, she does have the money. There are rules in the game to say whether she would um, remove it. You know, if you if you wanted to buy from this deck but couldn't afford it, um, then she would cycle the card. But as it is, she's got the 2,000 credits. So she buys some stolen weapons. Naughty girl. Naughty, naughty girl. Um, which are illegal. And they need to be delivered to Tatooine. So we're going to have another goal marker on... Oh, it's right there. Easy. And that's... So the people who criticise this game say it is a little bit random. There you go. You've seen it here. She's drawn a random card and it just turns out that it's on the place next door. But that's the game. That's the game. Right, we're going to reveal this and we have the Rebel Patrol moves three. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, that's her market actions done. So now we go to the encounter step. If at job destination, complete it. Now, the AI completes jobs without having to make any rolls or do anything whatsoever. Um, so basically, she's done it. She gains a fame and gets 4,000 credits. There you go. So she's got two fame, 4,000 credits. 
and that card is removed from the game. Done. She's done her job. Um, and she's now got some illegal cargo to deliver to Tatooine. Um, and that's it. That's what she does. Yeah, this is just a really nice game. I don't know. What, what do you think of it? Leave me... Um, I know a few people in the chat have, have played it. Um, but I am interested, if you are watching this live, how many of you have got this game, have played it and like it? How many of you have played it and wasn't keen on it? And how many of you not played it? And if you're not watching live, let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, let me know if it's, um, if it's a game that you hadn't heard about before or have heard about and wasn't sure how it played. Or are you a big fan of it? Right, my go. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to go to Mon Calamari to get to sell this salvage. But also, I'm still looking for Lobot. So I think we might need to head to Nal Hutter. Uh, and again, if this was a multiplayer game, I could actually be trading stuff with the other player. In fact, I've got an action where I can steal droids from other players. So I want Jin to get a droid crew so that I can steal the droid. Um, but I think... Oh, that, that gold counter should have gone. I think I'm going to go to Nal Hutter. Can I get there? Oh, I can't get there. It's seven away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, why did I pick the slow ship? Do we go fighting this Imperial Patrol? If we do, I get 5,000 credits. It's got three firepower. I've got three firepower. But once per combat, I can re-roll any, any number of dice. It's a little risky. Um, yeah, no, I don't think we'll do that just yet. I think we'll go back to Ryloth. So one, two, three, four. We're going to go back to Ryloth. Um, I've no money. So I could, I could take that bounty or we could get rid of that bounty and take a different bounty. Yeah, let's maybe do that. Because my character, I am AG88, IG88. I am an assassin droid. Um, so I'm probably a little bit better in combat. I mean, I want some gear, but I don't have the money yet to buy the gear. I'm going to cycle the Chewbacca bounty to the bottom. Nigel's here. Hi, Nigel. He says he's played quite a bit. It needs an expansion, as he's seen all the cards too much. Yes, that's what I was saying earlier on, is that if you have played the game a lot, it needs an expansion. I haven't played the game a lot, so therefore for me, this is, this is still great. Um, Scott's hearing mixed things about it, but yeah, this playthrough will you you will see, um, and hopefully I'm making it clear that uh, you know why I enjoy it. I think the fact that it's it's a Star Wars theme, and the fact that I'm doing everything that takes place in the Star Wars universe, it's all it, it's extremely thematic for me. Um, James is saying in multiplayer you definitely feel the need for an expansion as you do see the cards multiple times. Yeah, because you've got four players going through the cards. Um, Buying the ship minis from Star Wars Armada to play this game. Yeah, you could do that. I'm surprised there hasn't been a fan expansion, to be honest. Um, because, you know, a lot of other popular games get fan expansions. Anyway, we are drawing a new card, and it is a bounty for four LOM. Do I take that? They've got four combat. I've only got three. But look at that, I get 10,000 credits and two fame if I capture them. I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to take it. Might be wrong. Let's reveal another card. The Imperial Patrol moves four. Is it going to get me? No. One, two, three, four. It's almost got me. Right, so I now have a bounty to eliminate or capture this guy, whoever this guy is. I don't know where they're from. Maybe the comics or something. Uh, four LOM. Uh, but they've got combat strength of four. So that's going to be quite difficult. i got to find them. And that's what I might do now, because this is a green one, and there is a green one here. So maybe I should reveal this contact token. And it is Greedo. Oh, we love Greedo. Data bank number 12. There's only one. And that's the other thing. If they were to do an expansion for this game they'd have to expand to less well-known characters because all of the normal characters that you know and love are all in this game. Hans is here. Good afternoon, Hans. 
Han shot first. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, Greedo has been hired by Jabba the Hutt to hunt down those who have wronged him. Not me. Not me. Nothing to do with me. If you have a negative Hutt reputation, which I do not, then I would have to test stealth. Uh, if I have positive or neutral Hutt reputation, I may test influence. If I pass, gain the crew token below. It's basically the same as the Black Sun agent. So, I need a better ship that's got space for more crew. Okay, so I, I'm not going to put Greedo on my crew, even though I'm going to keep these face up, actually. Yeah, this is very similar to the Black, Black Sun agent. If I need a stealth crew, I can go there and recruit them. That is my turn done. Let's move on to Jin Erso. Uh, well, Jin Erso is going to move to Tatooine, I believe, to deliver these stolen weapons. So she moves to Tatooine. I'm going to remove the counter now before I forget. Uh, if at cargo destination, deliver it. Now, this is uh, an illegal good, so a human player must roll die when trying to deliver illegal goods. I don't know if the AI does that. I'm assuming not, because they cheat in so many different ways. Um, buying jobs and cargo. When the AI player delivers illegal cargo, they do not roll a die. However, some AI cards will have the AI player suffer damage when they deliver illegal cargo. Okay, so... If at cargo destination, deliver it. So they deliver it. Uh, they deliver some stolen, stolen weapons. Um, cannot buy and has it. Yeah. Okay. Reward. One fame and 7,000 credits. One fame, 7,000 credits. Now, does this card get removed from the game? It doesn't say. Doesn't say. Let me have a look. Uh, then discard the card to the bottom of its deck. Okay, so that card goes to the bottom of its deck. There's not many cards there. We need an expansion. <laughs> yes, Mandalorian expansion is, is, is definitely what we need. Um, right, uh, then Jin is going to buy some gear. Now Jin has 6,000 credits, so she's going to do it. So she spends 6,000 credits and she buys a jetpack. Um, during ground combat, can now does she do that? I mean, it says here buy gear. Even though this isn't really going to have any effect on her whatsoever. Oh, gear goes there, doesn't it? Yeah, that's not going to have any effect on her because she doesn't really roll any dice. Gaining crew buying. So if the top card can't be bought on the current planet, no. If the top card doesn't have enough credits, uh, if they don't have any empty slots, it will buy the top card. Um, I, be I think it's just buying the card just to get rid of it, even though they're not actually going to do anything with it. Okay, so the next card gets revealed. Uh, I was going to say it's going to bug me that that spanner's upside down, but that's because the cards are upside down. Um, no patrols move. Right. For Lom was in Empire Strikes Back, one of the six bounty hunters hired by Vader. Oh, okay, thank you. With Along with IG-88. Thank you very much for the information, Epsilon Indy. Because there was IG-88, there was Boba Fett, there was four LOM, and three others. Okay, so, uh, what's that? Maneuvering thrusters gives you one extra hold. Okay, next... Oh, reveal the face down contact token of the lowest class on this planet. Oh, that's actually quite good. So we're actually revealing this one, which means I know I don't need to go there. That is Garindan. That's the guy from um, Star Wars 4, Episode 4, New Hope, the spy who spotted the Millennium Falcon at Docking Bay 93, I think. Encounter step. Uh, nope. If at job destination, nope. Spend 8,000 credits to gain a fame. Yes. So Jin spends 8,000 credits, gains one fame. So let's just have a check at where we are. Okay, we're playing to 12. Jin, my opponent, has four. I have zero. Not going well. But we'll see how we get on. That's fun to play anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, that's it. That is the AI's turn done. And now it is my go. So now that we know that Lobot is not there, 
we are going to go to now hutter. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. So there's my movement done. Uh, do I want to buy anything? I mean, I have no money, but I could swap this for something else worth a thousand. But there isn't anything that I want. I can't take on another bounty. Can you switch one bounty for another one? Oh, hello. If you can, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let me have a look at bounties. Um, can I just give up on a bounty that I had? Bounties. When a player gains a bounty, place it on an empty bounty slot. The player may discard a card from a bounty slot to create an empty slot for the new bounty they have gained. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, this has worked out quite well, okay? I am going to take on the bounty to kill or capture Garindan, who we happen to know is right here. So I'm going to get rid of this bounty for four LOM. And instead, I'm going to take the bounty for Garindan because he's right around the corner. Um, was IG-88 really an Empire Strikes Back? I thought he was. Was he not? Scott saying Bosk. Okay, I thought IG-88 was in that. If not, where was IG-88 then? Right, so that's my market card done. We reveal a new one. The rebels move three towards me. One, two, three. And now we're going to try and do this bounty. Oh, is that, is that an action? No, it's a contact token. Yeah, so to do bounties, they must find the contact specified and then win a combat against it. When a player encounters a contact token that corresponds to one of their bounties... Right, okay, so that's it. We are now encountering that contact token. Do we need to draw the card? No, you don't. You either draw the card and do the stuff or fight it instead of resolving the contact data bank. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to draw data bank card number 10. We are going to fight Garindan. Uh, now Garindan has, and you can see it on here, and you can also see it uh, on the data bank card, but Garindan has three. I have three, but I have my two special abilities. So combat is basically, there's one round of combat. I'm going to roll my Dice. There's two types of combat, the starship combat and there's a ground combat. This is ground combat, so I'm rolling my three dice. So IG-88 was in Empire, but casual viewers would never know it. Yeah, thought he was. Okay, so I've rolled one hit, which I'm going to keep the hit. I'm going to use my special ability to re-roll any number of your dice. Okay, so I've got two hits. Now we roll for Garindan, and again, we just, we just roll the three. Oh, he's in two frames, is he? <laughs> okay, Garindan got one hit, so I take one damage. But then, because I rolled more damage or equal, attacker always wins ties, I have succeeded. So I can either eliminate Garindan, get 6,000 credits and a fame, or I can capture him and take him to Kessel. Hmm. And if I do that, I get 7,000 credits and two fame and a rebel reputation. But then after you gain a reward from this card, lose one Imperial reputation. What do I want to do? Do I want to go for the two fame? I think we need to. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to capture him. So when you capture him, I think you take the counter off the board and you put it on here. And then I've still got that card. Okay, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take him to Kessel. Uh, and I'm going to deliver him to the rebels, which is going to improve my rebel reputation and reduce my Imperial reputation. Right, okay. Okay, yeah, so apparently he is with Dengar, Bosk, and Boba Fett. There you go. Right, what is Jin doing? Jin is moving towards her closest goal. Does she have a goal? I don't think she does. Have I done this right? I think I have because the card she bought was the jetpack from last time. 
and then she just did that, spending out 3,000. Yeah, okay, so Jin currently doesn't have a goal. Um, so instead, she just gains 2,000 credits and she doesn't move. Um, now she's going to buy a cargo. She has 3,000, so she's going to buy the stolen hyperfuel. She's all about buying the stolen illegal goods, isn't she? So that goes in there. And we reveal a new card. Uh, and the hooked patrol moves three. One, two, three. Okay. Um, and then encounter step. So no, if it no, no, can't do any of that. And then we've got a special. Discard the top card of the bounty deck and the luxury deck. Okay. So that gets discarded, and it says, then shuffle this AI card back into the AI deck. Okay, so I've, I've been putting the discards um, on the bottom. So does that mean reshuffle the entire stack? I'll do those new cards in a minute. Uh, let me just have a look. Solo player rules. Um, playing the game. Draw the top card of the deck, resolve it, and then discard it face down to the bottom of the deck. Okay, so I've been putting them face up on the bottom, and I should have been putting them face down on the bottom, but that card you have to fight him to capture him. Who? There's a message from Kyle saying you have to fight him to capture him. Maybe Kyle's not watching live. Scrub forward, Kyle. Because um, I think I did that a while back. So that's done. We reveal two new cards from here, and I think this is going to move patrols. So there's no patrol moving there, but the huts are moving four. One, two, three, four. They almost got her. Yeah, Kyle's saying you don't just take it. The bounty. But I did. I did fight them. Yeah. I did fight them. I fought them and I won. So, I did that. I did. Unless I hadn't even got false memory. No, I definitely fought them. Because that's why I've taken one damage. Right. Done. My go. We are on Nal Hutter. There's a contact here. This could be Lobot. What are we doing on Nal Hutter? I thought I was on... Okay, I think I'm cheating. I, I, I should have gone there. Have I got the characters mixed up? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I was on Tatooine last round when I did this thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe I got the characters mixed up. Maybe I moved the wrong one, because I'm pretty sure we were both on Nell Hutter, and then Jin moved to Tatooine, and then I had to move to Tatooine for that. Yeah, so I forgot to move to Tatooine last turn. Which means I possibly cheated? I can't remember. What did I do last turn? Um, I bought something. So yeah, I would have moved to Tatooine, bought the card. Anyway, I can't undo it now, but apologies if I made some mistake there. Anyway, I need to deliver Garindan to Kessel, and I also need to find Lobot. So Lobot might be here, but I think it might be time to head towards Kessel. Now, Kessel is quite far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I went this way and did go to Nal Hutter, I could get there in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still can't get there in one round. Okay, I'm fine. I just failed to move the token. Right, okay, cool. So, yeah, I think we might head towards Kessel and we'll come back for this one later on. So, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm stopping at a nav point. So, there is no, there is no action that I can do here. Um, yeah, no market action, so I'm not doing any of that. So now we have an encounter step. And basically, if you're on a nav point, you get a nav point card. Okay, 
So if you're on one of the planets, you can take one of these cards. And we've not seen that yet, because that's another thing that you can do in the game, is that each of these planets has a deck where you can have cool encounters and adventures. I've just been looking at contacts. But we are having a nav point card. Right, so it is. Uh, I look whether there is no patrol or there is a patrol. There is not a patrol on here. So if you have positive Imperial reputation, I do not. If you have negative or neutral Imperial reputation, here in the middle of nowhere, you find a makeshift Imperial checkpoint. Better get your bribes ready. I don't know money. Right, test piloting. Okay, so I'll test my piloting skill. I need, I've, I don't have piloting, so I need a critical success on either one of these. And I didn't get it. If you fail, lose 2,000 credits unless you discard one of your cargo. Well, I will just lose 2,000 credits. Can I, can I do that? <laughs> it doesn't say lose 2,000 credits or discard one of your cargo. It just says lose 2,000. If anybody knows the answer to this, let me know. It says if you fail, lose 2,000 credits unless you discard one of your cargo. Well, I don't want to lose my cargo, so I lose 2,000 credits and I don't have 2,000 credits. Uh, have I played this solo before? I have once. And I've actually done a video on it. There is a video on my channel from about a couple of years ago where I did it solo once. Uh, Mark is saying it doesn't say the credits must be yours. Yeah, no, they've got to be mine. Oh, and Robbie's here. First time he's managed to get a live scream, stream. Did he miss much? We've just started playing, really. Um, yeah, unsatisfied demand rules, he would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that as well. But where are the unsatisfied demand rules? <laughs> That sounds like a Robinson Crusoe rule to me. What's it called in this game? I might just have to make a decision here and move on. Um, because if, if anybody knows the answer to this, then let me know. And if anybody knows where the answer to this in the rule book is, then let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'm not sure where it would be in the rules. Is it like paying a penalty? Damage, defeated... Goals, gear, encounter cards. It is an encounter card, isn't it? Yeah, it's an encounter card. Um, resolve an encounter card. Yeah, no, nothing mentioned there. Anybody found anything? Yeah, as you can't pay the other option. Yeah, so that would that would be the case, Peter. Uh, an FFG are normally quite good with that, but this this specifically uses different wording that I'm used to. It says, if you fail, lose 2,000 credits unless you discard one of your cargo. So normally FFG games where there is that rule, where you can't choose the option that doesn't lose you anything, it would include the word or. Um, and it doesn't include the word or. So I'm just trying to find where it might be in the rules. Spending. See credits on page five. Yeah, it's losing. It's not spending, it's losing. Um, so, credits. I remember reading something this morning. Here we go. Uh, when a player loses or spends credits, they take credit tokens from the play area that have a combined value. Da, 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 da. Buying at a discount, taking a card for free. Yeah, I'm not sure. Reread the card. So the card, oh, BGG. Ruling from BGG says you don't have to lose the cargo. Thank you very much. That's the way I was going to rule it. There's the card. If uh, if you fail, which I did, lose 2,000 credits unless you discard one of your cargo. So basically, I'm, I'm not going to discard my cargo, which means I lose 2,000 credits. Yeah, and there is a ruling on BGG that says you don't have to lose the cargo. So there you go. Thank you very much for confirming that. So that's it. I basically came across uh, a makeshift Imperial checkpoint. I failed my piloting skill. Uh, and they basically said, we want 2,000 credits. And what I could have, so thematically, I could have said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you this salvage instead. But as it is, I just went, sorry, mate, I've got no money. Um, and nothing happened. Cool, right. That's it. That was my encounter step. So now we go to Jin. What is Jin going to do? Now, again, she doesn't have a goal. Oh, no, she does. Destination, the Ring of Caffeine. I forgot to put the goal token on. 
So she moves towards the ring of Catherine. Now, she has negative reputation with the Imperials, so she can't move. Oh, we got a ruling question. This is not something that happened last night. She has a negative uh, reputation with the Imperials. For her to move to the ring of Catherine, it would end on there. Now, if a human player does that, they would have to stop moving um, because the patrol basically stops them. So let's just have a look at the solo rules for moving. Uh, the AI player will not choose a longer path to avoid patrols. Okay. Um, if, the near, if the space nearest to their goal contains a patrol, they will still move in that direction, even if they have negative reputation with that patrol. So I think, even though she can move six, she moves one, two, three and then get stopped by the patrol. I think that's how that works. Uh, if there are multiple paths, like a normal player, they must stop moving if they move into a patrol space and they do not have positive reputation. Ah, so it's not just negative. If you don't have positive, the patrol stops you. Okay, right, so she stopped her movement on a nav point space where there is a patrol which means she can't do any of these actions, which means we now do the encounter step. If negative reputation matching a patrol in this space, yes, encounter that patrol. So she's encountered the Imperial patrol. Um, right, so encountering a patrol. Here we go, encountering a patrol. She's basically gonna have a fight. So her ship has two attack. The Imperial patrol has three attack. Um, yeah, right, so I'm just going to roll some dice. So she's attacking with two dice and got two focus symbols, which is nothing. And then the Imperials attack with three. Oh no, they got nothing as well. And the attacker wins ties. But who was the attacker? That's the question. Who was the attacker? So neither side suffers any damage. Oh, he just needed one hit. Blooming Imperials, Stormtroopers on board. Combat against patrols. So unlike players, patrols and card enemies do not have health, they do not suffer damage. Um, instead, they have effects based on whether they win or lose the combat. Explained on the card and encounter a patrol 9. So... If neither player has an effect, yeah. The winner is the player that rolled the most damage. If both players roll the same amount, the attacker wins. Who is the attacker? Shouldn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you're absolutely right. She should have stopped there. Sorry. Change of plan. That didn't happen. Although I would like to know who won the fight. You're absolutely right. You'd, she would have stopped here because there's a hut patrol. Right. Rewound. Done. Thank you very much, Vega2112. And so she doesn't encounter the patrol because she's not negative, but she has stopped, which means she isn't at a job destination, can't spend 8,000 credits, gain one reputation with this planet's faction, if any. Right, brilliant. So she stops the turn. Um, but I would like to know in combat against the patrol, who wins if nobody suffers any damage? because I'm not quite clear who the attacker is. But we can get to that next time. So that patrol has actually really helped me because it slowed her down. Right, my go. We are going to go. One, two, three. We are at Kessel. Spice Mines of Kessel. Okay, so I've moved. Um, I'm going to deliver the bounty. Huzzah! So we've delivered Garindon. I get two fame. I get 7,000 credits. Um, and I lose one Imperial reputation, but I gain one Rebel reputation. Well, there you go. I mean, I'm a mercenary. I'm in with the Rebels. Um, yeah, and that's that gone from the game. Okay. Attacker wins, says Kyle. Yes, I know attacker wins, but I don't know who the attacker is. <laughs> was the player the, the attacker, or was the patrol the attacker? Yeah, that's the bit I'm not sure about. Right. Anyway, we've done that. We've done that. Um... May deliver the bounty, so we've done that. I can still do a market card. And now I have 7,000 credits. <sighs> right, Maz Kanata has got five combat. We do not want that. 
We could buy a bigger ship. It is a faster ship with less combat, more health. So I don't want that. I, I've decided I want to be a sort of combat -y type thing. Um, can't buy that because 20 grand. Mod. Have we got any mods? Maneuvering thrusters. Oh, that's really good. If I have tactics, your opponent rolls one fewer die. I don't have tactics. Okay, so maybe not. Don't want that. Don't want that. Hmm. What should I do? What should I do? I kind of want to buy something because I've got some money. Um... And I need more gear. So let, let's cycle the manoeuvring thrusters to the bottom. And let's have a look. And we've got an auto blaster, which costs 7,000. I have 7,000. I call that destiny. During ship combat, turn up to two of your focus results to attacks. If you have tactics, you may instead turn one of your focus results to a critical hit. I think let's do it, because you can always barter stuff away. I'm going to spend 7,000 credits, we're going to buy an Auto Blaster. Nice. Reveal the new card, and the Rebels move three. Oh, they're so close, they're hot on my heels. One, two, three. Because patrols ignore the Maelstrom space, I believe. The active player is always the attacker. I thought so. Michael says cycle the mods. I did. Right. Am I done? No, that's still the market phase. I've still got the encounter step. We haven't done the encounter step yet. So there's two contacts there. Or I could resolve an encounter on the space. Let's resolve an encounter on the space. So let's look at the Kessel cards. Uh, so Kessel is good for illegal cargo or fame if I had reputation. Yeah, let's go for it. Let, let's draw an encounter card for Kessel and see what happens. Unrefined coaxium is very unstable and is known to spontaneously explode. Is the payout worth it? You may lose one syndicate reputation or spend 3,000 credits to gain the cargo below. Now, unfortunately, I already have cargo, but I could throw that cargo away. At the end of your action step, roll a die. On that, discard this card in your ship. Wow! That seems quite dangerous. Destination Lothal. Yeah, I'm not going to get there before it blows up, am I? Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, not going to do that. That's going to go back to the bottom. But that's cool. That's, that's a cool thing that I could have done. Right, gins go. So... Uh, no, move towards closest goal. Jin still doesn't have a goal. So she gains 2,000 credits. No, she does have a goal. She's going to the Ring of Catherine. Oh, I'm, I'm being silly. So now she goes on to here. And now she stops. And we'll do the fight. We've already rolled the dice, so I'm not going to roll them again. Um... And basically she won the fight. Yeah, because she rolled two and got all misses. They rolled three, got all misses, which means she won the fight. Okay, so if you d win the combat, you lose one reputation with that patrols faction, which she can't, because uh, it's already the Imperials. So she blows them up. Um, gain the reward listed on the patrol token, which is 5,000 credits. Uh, and then spawn one patrol of that faction. So a new one spawns there, which is worth one fame. Um, and that's it, I think. Yeah, pretty sure that's how that works. There are some tyrants on Lothal. Where's Lothal been mentioned? It's definitely a name I've heard before. I assume all of these planets are from um, the Star Wars universe. I mean, you know what I mean. The Star Wars canon books and comics and stories and stuff like that. If not from the films. You know, I recognise a few of them. Ring of Catherine. I mean, which film has that been in? Has the Ring of Catherine been in a film? Maybe it has. Um, solo rules. Jobs and cargo. Game crew. Buying. 
Yeah, nothing about defeating patrols. So I think I've done that right. Um, and that's it. That's that's her turn done. Okay, my go. Lothal is from Rebels. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's really nice that you've got the Star Wars uh, animated series, you've got the films, you've got the books, you've got the games, and they manage to get it all to fit together. They don't just like make up a whole load of random stuff here, um, just for this. Now, I am positive with the Rebels, so I can go through this if I want to, but it is the Maelstrom space. And I don't think you can go through the Maelstrom space. I think you have to stop. Um, we still need to find Lobot. It could be here. Do we take the long way around? Or do we take the short way around? I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm going to go there. And because it's the Maelstrom, I have to stop. Pretty sure... That's the rules. If you move to the Maelstrom, you must immediately end your movement and go to your action step. Yes, do I want to do anything in the action step? I don't think there is anything I can do in the action step. So in the encounter step, um, I could fight the patrol. I could fight the rebels if I really wanted to. It's a bit nasty. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. I think I will. I think I'm going to fight the rebels. It's either that or resolve an encounter card or resolve a contact token. So I don't have to fight the rebels. And if I don't fight the rebels, I could resolve a, ca uh, a maelstrom card, which might get me an extra turn. But no, I'm going to fight the rebels. Catherine is in Rogue One. Okay. I thought I'd heard of it, and I have watched Rogue One again recently. Um, so yeah, we're going to fight the rebels. <laughs> Even though I'm friends with them, they're not going to like this. They're not going to like this at all. But I am IG88. I do my own thing. It's just like Mage Knight, this game. Um, so I've got three attack. I can re-roll any number of my dice. And I've got an auto blaster. So let's see what we get. Oh, well... I can turn up to two of my mm results into a hit. So I've got three hits. There you go. Uh, they've got three dice. Uh, and they roll a critical, which is two damage on my ship. But I won the combat, which means I get 5,000 credits. My rebel reputation goes down by one. 5,000 credits. Done. And then we get a new rebel patrol here. Nice. Okay, that is my encounter step done. So now it is over to Jin. Um, Jin is now going to move towards the Ring of Catherine. So she goes one, two, three. She's arrived on the Ring of Catherine. If at cargo destination, yes. Uh, so she gets 9,000 credits and one fame. So she's up to five. She has 9,000 credits. Wow. That goes to the bottom of that deck. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. 9,000 credits. Uh, then she's going to buy one of these cards, which she can. It is crew, so it just goes there for 1,000. Uh, and then we reveal a new card, and the Imperial Patrol moves four. One, two, three. Now, if a patrol moves onto you, and she has negative reputation with the Imperials. Um, I don't think it attacks her right now. I think she just can't move off it. Or was this what people were saying earlier on? I think some people earlier on today on the Gaming Rules Slack channel, and it might have even been Kyle or Sean, were saying that if you start your turn on a patrol with negative reputation, you can move off it. I think that's what was being said. Let me just check the market phase. Buying a buying card. Yeah. So patrols can move freely into and through the Maelstrom space and can end their movement in a space, even a planet. When a patrol ends its movement in your space, do not fight a combat. You will be required to encounter the patrol during your encounter step 
if you are still in the same space and have negative reputation. So she could just move away. She could move away next turn, but the, the Imperial Patrol has caught up with her um, because she's bought, she's hired this crew. Then encounter step. Oh, that's gone. Um, oh no, in the case of the AI, she is now encountering it. Because that's next. Okay, so she does. She does have to fight it. Okay. Um, so yeah, she's going to encounter the patrol. Now this has got five attack. You're going down. No more lucky rolls for you. Yeah, following the AI player's turn, we've done the action step, we've bought the card. See, it says buy a card and place a gold token on the card's destination. Am I doing this right? Did I buy the right card? I, did, I think I did buy the right card. Yeah, okay. Should be place a gold token on the card's destination, if any. That, that's my next question. Is, is she... Does she just buy random cards if they don't have goals on them? Buying. If the top card cannot be bought, if the top card if it doesn't have enough credits, um, doesn't have any empty matching slots, must obey the limitations of the cards. Didn't say that you can't buy it here from here. Will never buy a ship unless that ship costs more than the current ship. Yeah, I think we're good. So yeah, she gets attacked. So two dice for her as the attacker, even though the patrol's the attacker, that's the weird thing. Okay, no hits. And the Imperial Patrol has five. Come on. Yay, that's five damage. Okay, which means her ship has blown up. Kaboom. So I'm just gonna put three on it. So when you are defeated, which is what's happened. Um, you lose. I assume they get defeated just like, just like a human player. Um, damage. When a ship has damage equal to its hull, the player becomes defeated. Loses 3,000 credits or all of their credits, if they only had fewer than 3,000. Discarding all of their secrets, puts their standy on its side, finish resolving the current action step, and then their turn ends. And then next round, they basically have to recover. And if they recover damage so that they no longer have damage equal to their health, they are no longer defeated and they stand up. Yeah. Okay. So defeated uh, and turn ends. Okay. The Imperials got a big fight. Again, very thematic. I can, I can really sort of picture what's happening in this. My go... Well, let's not worry about the uh, the rebels that we just we just blew up. Let's go to Mon Calamari. One, two, three. There's my movement. I am then delivering this, but the rebels love me again, and I get five thousand credits. And they're like, "But we we lost contact with the patrol recently." And I'm like, "No, I don't know anything about that." No, nope, definitely don't know anything about that. Okay, so that's gone to the bottom of the deck, and now I have space for some cargo. I definitely need a better ship. We've got ten thousand credits. Uh, can I buy something? I, I could buy this. 20,000 credits for a gift for Jabba. <laughs> we could take on another bounty, but that's actually quite expensive. What about the job? The job needs tactics and it's in italics. I don't have that. I do like the jobs in this game. They're probably one of my favourite parts of the game. I love the way that the story is resolved when you're doing a job. Um, it's like a little mini adventure all in one. Um... What am I going to do? I didn't get any fame for that, did I? No, I just got some money. I need some gear. I, I want I want better gear for me, so I could cycle the gear deck. Uh, and then I can really start taking on these other bounties. Or do we upgrade the ship? and actually go and start blowing up patrols. That's another option, because these, these other patrols have got fame on them. Um, I just noticed the different patrols have different artwork for the different types of ships. That's really nice. Just a little nice touch. There's not much artwork on these cards, but 
what is there is nice. Um, I mean, the thing is with cargo, you've kind of got to buy some cargo in order to sell it and get other stuff. Probably not understanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is with cargo, you, you basically, you need a bit of money to buy something to sell it for higher money. Um, I, I don't think I'm ready for taking on this yet. And I don't think I'm ready for taking on this. I don't know what to buy. I don't know what to buy. And we need to find some droids. Why are we not finding any droids? Hmm. So that requires the ba the, the back to supplies need to go to Takadana, which is all the way over there. So I'm not buying that. I think I might cycle. I'm going to cycle the targeting. I'm going to cycle the gear deck. Let's see what we've got. Is it gear? It is gear. It's a vibro knife. It's going to cost 4,000. Uh, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy the vibro knife. Remember, I could always trade in the auto blaster. I have 7,000 credits here for bartering. But I've got a vibro knife. That means that in ground combat, I can turn one of my focus ones to a thing. And if I've got stealth or strength... I have strength. Excellent. That's really good for me. The new card is the Huts move three. Where are the Huts? The Huts are here. One, two, three. Right. That's still my action step. I've now got the encounter step. I'm not really bothered about these two. Um, because I can't have any more crew. Cycle the ship. Yeah, I, I thought about the ship. Now that I've got 11 credits here, 11,000 credits here, I might cycle the ship, try and get the Falcon. Um, yeah, I mean, I've still got to find Lobot, but I'm hoping Lobot is here or here, and then drop him off here. That, that's my plan. Um, should we have a card? Now, what kind of cards do we have at Mon Calamari? Jobs and movement. Let's go for that, because it might be a job. Right, we are going to have an encounter card for Mon Calamari. And it is... The engineer offers to modify your hyperdrive with some military-grade tech. You may spend 1,000 credits to gain the mod below. I can't have the mod. I've already got a mod. It would have been... Discard this card during your planning step to get four movement. Right, okay, never mind. I could have had that. I chose not to. My go is over. It is now Jin's go. Jin is defeated. So she has to spend her planning step removing all damage uh, and standing up. Which is what the card says. Uh, yeah, recover all damage. So then action step. Um, if at cargo destination. No. Is she going to have to fight it again? Is she going to have to fight the patrol again because she's still at the Ring of Catherine? I think she is. Interesting. Right, she's buying this. So she's got a job to do on Ryloth. She's doing a job for the Imperials. But she doesn't like the Imperials. Okay, well, she's trying to get on their good side. Scott's got to go to play Crystal Palace. Thank you very much for popping in, Scott. Francis is here. Good morning, Francis. Good to see you. Uh, Mon Calamari has some nice seaside restaurants with fancy... Re uh, nice seaside resorts with fancy restaurants. I thought so. I got a brochure through last week, actually. Um, yeah, because they're doing a discount at the moment on holidays to Mon Calamari. But yes, my question is... <laughs> Rules question. Um, because she didn't move, is she going to have to fight the patrol again? I think she is. So we reveal that. Uh, nothing moves, so we're having another fight. Does that mean then that she's in a... She's stuck in a state where she's going to constantly be having a fight every turn with the same patrol? That doesn't sound right. Maybe the, tr the patrol should have been reset. 
Um, right. When a player loses a combat against a patrol, the player moves the patrol to an adjacent space of their choice. There you go. That's the bit I missed. So in the solo rules... Um, solo rules against patrols. Where is it? Um, if the AI player is defeated during their turn, they do not resolve any subsequent bullets on their AI card. Instead, they finish resolving the bullet on the AI card that they were resolving, and then they are defeated and their turn ends. That's fine. I think I think we did that. Yeah, I think we did that. Um, hmm. It does say, if one of your card abilities forces the AI player to make a decision, I'm making a decision about where to put that, uh, the AI always chooses not to participate when possible if it's forced to make a decision, randomly determine the outcome. Okay, so I think we're randomly determining the outcome. Patrol should have moved, yes. So it's either uh, there, there, or there. Well, I need a D6. Has anybody got uh, a D6 handy? <laughs> where's where's a d6 when you need one how am i going to decide right i'm just looking under my table for a game that might have a normal d6 in no so uh if somebody wants to pick a random number for me between one and three how did jean get all her background was there a book or a comic or something i'm not sure Right, Paula said six. So Paula's rolled a six, which is a three in a D6. So one, two, three. Uh, the patrol has gone there. Right, there we go. Thank you very much. Good old uh, live chat for a random number generator. Um, anyway, so action step. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. That, that. She spends 8,000 credits and gets her fame. So she's on six fame already. Remember, we're playing to 12 today, which is the long game, but I did start her on one. I'm still on two fame. And it's my go. Now we've done some of the stuff that I wanted to do. It's, it's starting to come together. Uh, but now we are going to go to Lothal. And are we gonna buy something? I've got 6,000 credits. I've actually got, if I really wanted to, I've got 17,000 credits if I add all of this stuff up. Um, so are we going to cycle the ship? I mean, I kind of want the auto blaster and the vibro knife. And I can have two lots of gear. So I'm, I'm going to cycle the gear again. And we're buying it. It's 3,000 credits. And it's a heavy blaster rifle, a DL-44 heavy blaster rifle. Nice. So we've actually got four fight. New card gets revealed. Patrols do not move. Right. Now we're going to resolve this combat. And it is Dr. Evazan, another character from Star Wars A New Hope. Um, that isn't somebody I've got a bounty on. So we go to card number nine. Card number nine says, Dr. Evazran, I don't like you either. Test strength. Now, I'm good at strength. I am I am highly skilled at strength. You know what this means, we're gonna fail. Nope, we succeeded. Uh, if you fail, your character suffers two damage. Pass or fail, you may spend 2,000 credits to gain the crew token below and discard his token. Well, I've only got space for one crew on the ship, so Dr. Evaz Evazan is going over there, and he's gonna stay there for now, but He's got the tech skill. So if I need the tech skill, although I've already got the tech skill. Okay. So Lobot is either there or there. <sighs> Don't forget you have to pay for taking actions with those dice. Uh, <laughs> not sure what you mean. Is that because they're rolling well? I have to pay them? Um... Oh, Paul's reading the rules for The Magnificent. Great game. Really, really good game is The Magnificent. Uh, One-armed crew is not the most helpful. Yes, that's true. That is true. 
So that's my go done. Right, Jin's go. If defeated, no. Move towards closest goal. Does she have a goal? She does, Ryloth. So she can move there. So she gets there. There you go. Um, if all cargo is full, no, buy that. Otherwise, buy that. So she's buying this for a thousand. Uh, and that needs to go to here. And we reveal a new card. And the syndicate patrol moves four. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's kind of blocking my space. I thought I can go the other way around. It's fine. Um, okay, and then encounter step. If a job destination completes it. So she does an imperial favour. The Empire wants you to prevent an arms dealer from meeting rebel operatives at Ryloth. Um, so she succeeds. She gets an imperial reputation. So they don't hate her anymore. She gets 5,000 credits. Uh, and if she had positive imperial reputation, she would also lose one rebel and gain a fame. Then discard this card. So discard, not remove from the game. Yeah. Uh, done. My go. It's actually relatively good AI. You know me, I don't like complex AIs, but in this game, it's not complex. It's actually really well done, the AI in this game. Okay, so I'm going to go to Ord Mantel. I am going to... I mean, we've got lots of gear now. The only thing I really could buy... Oh, I can't buy this for Ord Mantel. Brilliant. So I am going to cycle that card. It's a smuggling compartment. It's a mod. I can't buy that without losing my auto blaster. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to buy anything. I could take on this bounty. Actually, I could do this now. Because I've got that and I've got that and I've, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I've got five attack and I've got loads of bonuses. So I am going to take on the bounty to get rid of Maz Kanata. Um, so that goes there. New card gets revealed. And the Syndicate moves four. And the Syndicate is onto me. So one, two, three, four. There you go. The Syndicate has come looking for me. Cycle stuff you don't want the bot to have. Yep. Um, but because I'm not negative, I don't have to fight it. It's just on my space and they wave and say hello and that's fine. Okay, so now we're looking for Maz Kanata as well. But first I want to get rid of Lobot because Lobot's easy. So in my uh, encounter step, we're going to encounter this and it is W1LE. Now that's good, good for one reason, but bad for another one. It means Lobot is here on Nal Hutter. I knew it. So W1LE is a droid, because my personal goal is to have two droid crew. So I'm going to need a bigger ship for that, but let's have a look at 22. Card number 22 is W1LE. Most droids are rather high strung, so W1LE's laid back demeanour and easy charm are a pleasant surprise. If you are Lando Calrissian, nope, uh, otherwise you may test tech. Okay, I have tech. If you pass, gain the crew below and discard W1LE's token. If you fail, you can spend 3,000. Do I want to get rid of Ponda Baba and have that instead? I don't think I do. So I think for now... I think for now I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, that's my turn done. Jin's go. Uh, Jin is going to move towards her closest goal. That shouldn't be there. Does she have a goal? She does, here. Can she get there? Moving six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gets her one close. Two, three, three, four, five, six. She can get there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so she arrives at Takadana. Uh, she delivers this, getting her 6,000 credits. And it says, if you are not a droid, discard this card to recover all damage from your character. Okay, you can use it basically to heal. So that's done. That goes to the bottom of that deck. Um, 
Oh, if it was illegal, she should have suffered three damage. She didn't. She's then buying a ship. Aha! And she has 5,000, so she buys the ship. So 5,000. This is where we get these ships. These are really cool, like these. She's buying the GX1 short hauler, which is that one. One on top of the deck. Nice. That card goes from the game. Uh, this gets completely replaced by this one. Basically, it's a bigger ship. It's got space for more stuff. Okay. Uh, and we get a new card. And it is the YV666 light freighter. Do I want that? Oh, it's quite big, isn't it? I mean, we want the slave one. Of course. Um, so she's bought a ship and then encounter step. Oh, that should go. Um, no, none of that. If at job destination, complete it. No, gain 4,000 credits, then lose one reputation with this planet's faction. There isn't one. So she gains 4,000 credits. Okay, done. Yeah, this is going well. I like this. Uh, my go. So we, we've got a choice here. Um, I can start looking for Maz Kanata. Can, Kanata, or we can head to Nalhutta because we know Lobot is there. I think we need to head. We need to head there. So let's go. I'm, mo I'm still moving five. I've still got two damage on this ship. One, two, three. Do we do we want to stop it? Stop there. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop there because from there I can go one, two, three, four, five to Nalhutta next turn. So I'm stopping there. I'm going to cycle the smuggling compartment to the bottom. And then I'm going to spend 2,000 credits to buy some illegal cargo. Which needs to go to here. I reveal the next card and the syndicate moves three. They just keep coming after me. But they're not doing anything, are they? Hi, Stephen. Thank you very much. Yes, solo game. Solo game of Star Wars Outer Rim. It's fantastic. It's really good. So yeah, the Syndicate keep catching up with me, but because I don't have a negative reputation with them, I... Ah, but it means I could now fight them. <laughs> if I wanted to. Yeah, because I've just bought... I think I might. I think I might. Yeah, so it's my encounter step. And I could resolve an encounter card. I could resolve a token. It could be Maz Kanata. Or we could we could blow this syndicate thing up. Um, now I'm three and it's three. No, I think I think I'm I think I'm gonna resolve this com this this token here. Um, yep, Mount at Rim is not only multiplayer, it is solo. So we have found K2SO, which is an Imperial droid, and it's card number 16. It's another droid. We need droids. Oh, this is the um this is the one from Is this the one from Rogue One? I think this is the one from Rogue One. One of the best parts of Rogue One is is the um, is the droid in that. Really good. He thinks you might be a rebel spy, so you'll need a creative way of convincing him otherwise. You may test tech. If you pass, gain the crew below and discard the token. If you fail, but you have either positive rebel or negative imperial, I have both, uh, your character suffers three damage. Which would defeat me? Hmm. So it says you may test tech. If you pass, gain the crew below and discard the token. If you fail, right, I don't have to. I could just say, no, I'm not going to bother. Uh, because I don't want to suffer the three damage, because that would defeat me. But it's a droid, and I need two droid crew. How can I get more tech? I could have Dr. Evazan on the ship. If I had Dr. Evazan, that would help me. 
What do we do? Do we try? Or do we leave him here? I think I'm going to try. Yeah, I mean, it's an Imperial droid. Not sure. Chance of me succeeding is 75% chance. There's one critical and two hits. No, three hits. So there is a 75% chance I will succeed. Let's do it. I am gonna test tech. So because I've got one skill of tech, I am skilled. And I got it. So I am gonna have K2SO. So sorry, Ponder Baba. You've been no good for me at all, but you've gone. So that gets removed from the game. And I now have K2SO as my crew. Awesome stuff. There you go. Done. Yeah, I didn't have room for it, but we decided to boot Ponder Baba out, ditch him, throw him out the airlock. Uh, and that is my go done. Right, Jin's go. Uh, move towards closest goal. She doesn't have a goal now. So gains 2,000 credits. Uh, if at cargo destination, deliver it. See, she buys cargo. She's buying some more illegal cargo. Uh, that cargo wants to go to Kessel. There you go. And then in counter step, uh, she spends 8,000 credits to gain a fame. So Jin is now on seven fame. Remember, we're playing to 12 today, and Jin started at one. Special, discard the top cards of that deck and that deck, and then shuffle this card in. Okay, so that's the reshuffle card. So we get a new Rebels move four. One, two, three, four. And, oh, should have done this one as well. Uh, this, the Huts move four. Where were the Huts? The Huts were here. So they're going towards it. One, two, three, four. And then we have the Imperials move three. One, two, three. Ah, now that's at the end of the turn. Yeah, that was at the end of the turn. So she's already had her encounter step. So she doesn't have to fight them. Okay. Yeah, this is the official solo that's removed from the game. It's not removed from the game. It goes on the planet that you're on. Ah, I didn't know that. So Ponder Baba... Uh, what, the card just goes there, or the token goes there? I guess the token goes there. Okay, so we'll, we'll find him again, and we'll put him there. Okay, cool. And we'll put the data bank card over there. Uh, the movement only happens when you buy a card. Oh, right. In which case, I was doing that wrong. So, when it's triggered by the AI, where it says discard... That doesn't actually happen then. Okay, so we need to move the Imperials back and we need to move the Rebels back. In fact, I moved them wrong anyway. Where were the Rebels? Because it says four. Okay, so thank you very much for that. I didn't realize Vega 2112. But when you are discarding the top cards for this, The things don't move. Okay, I didn't know that. Right, done. My go. Where are we trying to go? Oh, I've got these stolen goods. I should have gone here. Ah, well. Uh, right, we're going one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've moved five. Uh, do I want to buy anything? I have 1,000 credits, but remember I, ha I can trade, I can barter, but I think I'm happy with what I've got. I, I have some really good stuff. I don't think I want to trade up at this point. I mean, I could trade it up for the light freighter, but I'm not going to. So I'm not doing a market phase. I'm not buying a card or anything like that. I am just going to encounter this 
and we know it's Lobot, so instead of drawing card number 18, we're going to have a fight. I've got one, two, three, four, five, right, with all sorts of special abilities. This is crazy now. Um, I can turn a focus to a hit because of that. Um, and then because of this, I can re-roll these. So I've rolled five damage. So there's no point rolling for Lobot um, because he can't beat me. Oh no, you still roll because he might actually do damage to me. Zero damage. Lols. Right. Are we going to eliminate you or capture you? We are going to capture you because you're going to the same place as the stolen prototype that I've got. That is my go done. Right. Excellent. Jin's go. Um, move towards closest goal. Kessel. Moving six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. If moving too fewer, would she step on a planet? No. Has to stop there anyway. Doesn't have to fight it. Can't do any of that stuff. So doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do that. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that is her turn done. Nice and simple. My go. We are now going to Cantonica to deliver these two things. So, one, two, three, four, five. Back to Mon Calamari. Um, we could blow up the Syndicate ship while we're there. So I only have 1,000 credits. Again, I could buy something, but I, I don't think I want to. I think I'm happy with what we've got. I mean, I could cycle some cards, but Saw Guerrero is here, and he's six attack. But I'm pretty tooled up. I've got five with some re-rolls, so I might actually take that bounty next time. Um, so I think I'm going to cycle... How do we get droids? I think I'm going to cycle that card. It's a job, okay? Um, which I can't take at the moment. But I might take next time. Okay, and then for my encounter, do we just try and blow up the syndicate ship to get some more money? Or do we have an encounter on Mon Calamari? I'm really not using these cards. The game comes with all these cards, and I'm and I'm hardly using them because I'm sort of doing the contacts thing instead. Where do you get droids from? Are they just different types of crew? Yeah, you can get crew on Cantonica. You can buy fame at the Ring of Catherine. Buy ships at Ryloth. Okay. Okay, right, cool stuff. Um, yeah, I think we might just fight the... Um, I, need, I do need a bigger ship to have the two droids, yes. And this one can have three crew. So I think my plan is to get money and buy the YV666 light freighter, unless Jin buys it before me. So I think we're just going to, as my encounter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight that. So I'm only three dice in combat, but I can re-roll, and I can turn focuses into hits. If I have tactics, which I do not, I could do something else. Okay. Okay, so a critical, and I'm going to turn one of my things into a hit. So I've done three damage. Oh, and I'm going to re-roll this. So I've done four damage. That's pretty good. Right, the Syndicate ship, which looks like a headhunter, has done two damage. Which means I'm defeated. Which means I need to read another rule. Rule. Hmm. So if I get defeated in combat, but also win the combat. I remember reading that last night in bed. Resolving combat. The combat ends after both sides suffer damage. If either player has an effect that requires a winner to be declared, the winner is the player who rolled the most damage. Yeah. 
which is me. When your character suffers damage equal to your health or your ship suffers damage equal to your hull, you become defeated. Um, when you become defeated, finish the current step of your turn, but skip any actions or steps that you have not started resolving. Yeah, I still win the combat, but then afterwards, I'm defeated. Right, excellent. So I've won the combat. We've destroyed the Syndicate patrol. I lose a reputation with the Syndicate. I get 5,000 credits. Uh, a new Syndicate patrol pops up, but then I am defeated, and I will have to recover next turn. Done. Jin's go. Jin is moving towards Kessel with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If she moves two fewer, would it she land on a planet? No. Uh, so it doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do that. That's it. Done. My go. I stand up and I remove. Do you remove all damage? I think you do. I think you heal everything. Suddenly got really hungry. Um, yeah, you must choose the option to recover all their damage from their character ship and ship character card and ship sheet and stand your thing up. Right, right, okay. So that was it. So I can't move or get two thousand credits, but I still do all of the other stuff. So I can still buy something. Again, I got six thousand. If I was to trade in nine thousand worth of stuff, I could get the YV six 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 light freighter. But I don't want to. I want my stuff. I bought it. I worked hard for it. No, I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, so shall we cycle the job? Or do we cycle another bounty for one that's a bit easier? Yeah, let's cycle the bounty because we don't know where Saw Guerrero is. That should be there. Oh, it's a job. <laughs> Ground or ship combat. We can do that. We can totally do that once I've got more room. Um, and then I'm going to have an encounter. Now, do we want to encounter this? Probably not. So we're going to draw another card from Mon Calamari. Oh, lose 3,000 credits. Yeah, thank you. I did forget that. Mon Calamari. A racing enthusiast wants you to take out his favourite father's top competition. You may gain the job below, except I don't have room for it. Okay, so I can't do that. Sorry. We are done. Jin's go. Uh, move towards closest goal. So she moves towards Kessel. Delivers this. Gets one fame and 7,000 credits. Oh, it's getting close. It's getting close. 7,000 credits and one fame. Jin is now on eight fame. Um, oh, if cargo is illegal... Was it illegal? It was illegal. She suffers two damage. Excellent. Uh, then she buys one of these. Okay, so she needs to do a job at Ord Mantel, which is here. So that's her job. Um, reveal a new card and move the patrol. So the Rebel Patrol moves four towards her. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then spends 8,000 credits to gain a fame. So she's now on nine fame. If we were playing to 10, this game is almost over. And let's just check again. See how much fame I've got. I have two. <laughs> it's a shame these tracks only go up to 12. I'd like to play to 20. Play to 20 fame, why not? Um, right, where are we up to? That was her go. Yeah, that was her go. So, my go. I can move. Can I get to Cantonica? I can. I have to go through the Rebel Patrol, but that's fine, because they like me. One, two, three, four, five. We've done it. We're there. Oh. So, deliver cargoes and bounties. I get one fame and 10,000 credits. For delivering... Lobot. Done. 
Then I deliver this illegal cargo. So because it's illegal, I have to roll, roll a die on a hit, I deliver it, otherwise resolve card one. I didn't get a hit, so I have to resolve card one. Now there are four card ones. Basically, card one is, if you're trying to deliver cargo and you fail, then something random happens. Local security. If you have negative reputation with a patrol in your space, no. Um, otherwise, resolve the section below that matches the test result. So I rolled the I. The I says, you'll never get past the checkpoint without being seen. Test stealth. Yeah, haven't got stealth. So I need a critical success. I did not get a critical success. If you pass, deliver this cargo and end your turn. If you fail, lose one reputation with your planet's faction. There isn't a planet's faction. And end your turn. Okay, so... I tried selling the cargo. Uh, I failed to sell the cargo, presumably. Yeah, I failed to sell the cargo. So I've still got the cargo and my turn is over. Rats. But at least I delivered that bounty. So Jin's go. Um, where is Jin going now? Order Mantel. So she moves. They She ignores the maelstrom, I think. One, two three, four, five, six, yeah, um, buys one of these, so now has uh, destination Lothal, well she's on Lothal, oh, that's a bit cheaty isn't it, she goes to Lothal and gets a job at Lothal, and it doesn't say can't pick up from Lothal. Um, but she doesn't do it. Do the first that applies. No, interesting. So her card doesn't do the job. Most cards, I think, do. Yeah, if a job destination completes it. So she doesn't always do the job. Right, okay, even though she's there. So instead, it's not that, it's not that, it is reveal the face down contact of the lowest class on this planet and gain the crew on its card for free. Oh, earlier on when she revealed the card, I think she should have gained the crew. Right, so it's this one. Well, it says reveal the face down, oh yeah, reveal the face down. So revealing uh, Bib Fortuna and gains it as a crew, which she can have. Yep, so Bib Fortuna. Jabba the Hutt's right-hand man. Oh. Day Wanawonga, he asks as he steps from the shadows. This is your chance to gain the ear of Jabba the Hutt. So it does say, and gain the crew on its card for free. But this isn't a crew card. Hmm, I'm confused. Objective marker for Ord Mantel and Lothal. Yeah, so I should have put that on there. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, this is interesting. I've, I've drawn the right card. It's card number three, but this isn't a crew card. So if anybody wants to look up this on BGG or let me know what happens when the AI recruits Bib Fortuna. Because I don't think you can. I don't think there's going to be anything in, in the book. I don't remember seeing anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up quickly. So uh, Star Wars Outer Rim Solo Bib Fortuna. Um, Bib Fortuna the Wikipedia. No, Star Wars, loads and loads of Star Wars stuff. Uh, Day Wanna Wonga. Right, no, can't find it easily. So let's see what people are saying in the chat. Um, rules reference, page 19. Oh, you found it. If data bank card does not have crew on it, discard the card back to the deck. Right, excellent. And Bib Fortuna stays there. So that was rules reference, page 19. Thank you very much. I'm on page 19. <laughs> I just didn't see that. Oh, 
AI cards instruct the player to reveal face down contact tokens. If there are no face down contact tokens, right? Um, the AI resolves the lowest class face up. If there are two face down, the data bank card does not have current. Right, okay, thank you very much. It is in there. Excellent. Done. My go. Are we going to try and sell this again? I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to try and sell it again. I could just trade it in. I right, forget this stolen cargo. Let's just let's let's buy the YV six 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 light freighter instead, and then let's go and get a droid. I think that's what we're going to do. So I am going to move to Ord Mantel. In the market phase, I am going to get rid of this illegal cargo for two thousand plus 13,000 in cash, which is exactly what I've got, to buy the YV666 Life Rater. So that goes. And if you don't, if you've not seen this game being played before, um, the ships that you buy also have personal goals on them. Um, well, they have a ship goal on them. Uh, and then when you do the ship goal, you get you get like an upgraded version of the ship, which is even cooler. Yeah, they've put a lot of thought into this game. There's a lot of stuff going on, and it's really good. So, my ship is a lot better. You heal any damage that you had, which is awesome. Uh, and my goal is, when I recover at least one damage from the ship, I spend 7,000 credits, gain a fame, and flip this sheet. But more importantly, look at what I can have. I can have loads of cargo, and I can have three crew. So, I bought the card. I've spent all my money. We get a new card. It's the Falcon or to give it its uh, technical term, a modified YT-1300 light freighter. Um, right, so that card goes out of the game, and that was my market phase. So now I am going to encounter W1LE. Uh, I haven't got any money. Oh, I need the money. Right, so I'm not going to encounter him. I'm going to encounter this instead. And I hope this is uh, this is going to be enough. Um, let me just pop out the chat so I can see it a bit easier. There you go. Right. So yeah, we're going to encounter this. And it is uh, Black Krunstun. Not come across this one before. Looks like a Wookiee. It's card number four. So card number four is Black Crusantan. The infamous Wookiee bounty hunter could be a valuable ally or a dangerous enemy. If you have a bounty or job, I do, you may spend 1,000 credits to gain the crew below and discard Black Crunston's token. If you do not gain the crew, and you have at least one negative reputation, I do. Fight a ground combat. And if you win, discard... Oh, so basically, I can, if I've got a bounty, I can pay him to come with me and help me. But if I don't, but somebody wants me, he's fighting me. That's fine. So we're, we're in a fight. Um... Am I always the attacker? Because it seems like he's attacking me. So I'm on three, four, five. So I'm on five dice. Okay. So I've rolled a critical hit, which is two damage. Three damage. I've rolled three focuses. I can convert one of them into a damage. That's four. And then I'm going to re-roll these two using my ability. Uh, and that's nothing. So I've dealt four damage. Black Cranston is attacking me with four. But because of K2SO, each of my opponent's criticals counts as one damage instead of two. And he got three. So I did four damage to him. He did three damage to me. That was a big fight. Um, and I don't get anything out of it. I, it is just discard that, discard that, but I don't get any bonus. So that's a shame. 
Um, but that is my turn done. Right, gins go. Move towards closest goal. She's at her closest goal. If at cargo destination, deliver it. She doesn't have a cargo de destination. Oh, should have revealed this. Did we forget to move something? Probably did. What's that? Syndicate's moving four. Yeah, I think I forgot to do that. I think that was Jin's last turn. Um, so she's buying one of these, which is that for three grand. She doesn't have three grand, so she's going to cycle it and see what comes out. It's three grand, so she doesn't buy it. Um, and then reveal the face down contact of the lowest class on this planet. Which she can't do. Right. And then encounter step. She doesn't have a negative reputation with the syndicate, so she doesn't have to fight it. If a job destination complete it, she has a job on Lothal. So she completes it, gets one rebel reputation and five grand. And that's it. Done. My go. Um, so I need to get W1LE on my side. But to do that, I need three grand. I'm, I'm looking, basically, for Maz Cantana. Kanata. Yeah. Uh, the Lothal one should have gone. Yeah. Okay. Or do we want to go around and start blowing up some more syndicate ships? Could do with tactics as well. Oh, so many things to do. So many things to do. I think we're just going to go to Cantonica. Um, I'm going to cycle the Falcon so that the AI doesn't buy it. Yeah, nice. And then do we take on a job? So this one needs ground or ship combat. This one, yeah, we'll take that one on. We're going to take on a job. Uh, you see a familiar name on the bounty board. It seems that they have crossed the wrong people. So I need to go to a space containing another player that has at least one negative reputation. Oh, right, that's attacking another player. Well, they don't have a negative reputation. So that's actually not going to help at all. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah, okay. So I'm not buying anything in the market phase. Uh, and then we're going to encounter this. It is Zyton Modge, number 23. Let's have a look at Zyton. Get some more cargo to drop off. Yeah, I've got no, got no money. I just need to do something to get a bit of money. And I know I could give in my blaster pistol to get it, but I don't want to. It's a blaster pistol. So Zyton Modge. Let's see what he's got to say. Now, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know where he's from. This opportunity benefits us both, but there will be a cost. You may lose one syndicate reputation. Well, I can't. To either gain 5,000 credits or take up to 5,000 credits from a player that has more fame than you. Hello. Thank you. So is that it? That, that character just stays there now. And every time you visit that character, you can take 5,000 credits from a player that has more fame than you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm doing that then. And now I can buy some stuff. Right, okay. Uh, it is now Jin's go. Recover all damage, move towards closest goal. So she moves towards Mantel. Uh, she doesn't have any cargo there, so she's going to buy this. which is a job at Nal Hutter. And then we reveal a new card. And the Imperial Patrol moves three. Where is the Imperial Patrol? It's here. Uh, one, two, three. And then she does the job at Ord Mantel, which is 5,000 credits and one reputation with the Huts. Yep. 
Yeah. I'm glad these are not giving any fame. Because she's already on nine, and I'm still only on three. Wow. I'm not doing very good at this game, am I? Okay, my go. Um, where do I want to go? I, I need another droid. If I have another droid, that'd be great. But I don't think I can pick that droid up. Hmm. Yeah, I need stuff that's going to give me... Uh, so there's the Jewel of Navin on Naboo. I need knowledge, don't have. Tactics, don't have. Influence, don't have. Stealth, don't have. Tech, do have. So that's not a good job for me. Where am I going to go? We're looking for Maz Kanata. Could be anywhere. Could be here. And the ship goal, I need to be damaged and recover that damage and spend seven grand. So I basically need money. Now this is a fancy job. That's a very fancy job. Destination, any planet where you have positive reputation with the planet's faction. So if I had 10 grand, oh, that'd be good. That would be very good. Yeah. Three, three, three grand to get the other droid. Yeah, you're right. I did. Thank you. I've forgotten that. We're going toward Mantel. Okay. Now, do I want to buy anything? No, I do not. Do I want to cycle any cards? Yes, I do. I want to cycle that card because I do not need that card. All right. There's a bounty on Boshek. We don't know where he is. But he's easy to defeat. But now we're going to encounter W1LE. Thank you very much. I had forgotten that. Right, so you may test tech. I need... Uh, I'm, I am skilled, so a success or a critical success. Failed. Boo. If you pass, gain the crew below and discard the token. If you would fail, you may spend three grand to pass it instead. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend the three grand to consider the test passed. The token is removed, and I now have two droids on my crew, which means I gain a fame, and I flip the card. So, I'll show you this. You flip the card over, and it basically, you get slightly better. That's the same, that's the same, but now, when I would become defeated, I can discard one of my crew to recover all damage from your character and ship instead. Place the crew contact token on the nearest... Step. Right, okay, there you go. So, yeah, I've done my own personal goal, basically. Right. Okay, so, what's next? It is now Jin's go. I am still up against it to somehow get eight fame before Jin gets another three. It's not going to happen, is it? Because I did read in the book that if you play to 12 fame, it's slightly easier for the player. So I figured that I'd start Jin on one... And might, that might balance it out. You should only play to 10, but I like the game and I wanted... I figured I've got all afternoon. Why not? Uh, so, move towards the nearest goal. Does she have a nearest goal? She does. That shouldn't be there. Nal Hutter is her goal. Um, but I think she's moving through this syndicate patrol to get there. So she stops. So she moves one, lands on the syndicate patrol and stops. Um, then she buys this, okay, for nothing, and she's got another job on Naboo, and we, re re we reveal a new card, and the Rebels move three, which is onto her space, so we've got the Rebels there, and the Syndicate that are there, but she's super friends with them, so that doesn't matter. Um, and then Encounter Step, nope, nope, re nope. Oh, no, she does. Reveal the face-down contact token of the lowest class on, and gain the crew on its card for free. Now, because they're both revealed, um, if there are no face-down contacts, the AI resolves the lowest class the lowest class with the fewest pips. So she resolves Dr. Evazan and gains that crew. So there we go. Dr. Evazan is now on her crew. Okay. 
There we go. Yes, there is a job on Baboon. <laughs> uh, Mark is saying you want to damage your ship to dump a useless crew to complete your ship's goal. Yes, I think so. If Jin gets to 12, just remove a point. It's a house rule anyway. Nobody will notice. Yeah. We're, we're just going to play. Maybe I'll just play this all day and all night until we get to 100 fame and go through the entire deck. You could do. Could turn it into a campaign game. Star Wars Outer Rim Legacy. Anyway, we're done. My go. So we've done that. We've done that. We've done the personal goal. I'm a little bit damaged, but we're still on the lookout for Maz Katana. Maz Kanata. But the problem is now, if I move through here, I am going to stop and have to fight that syndicate ship. And it's got five attack. And my ship to ship ship to ship combat is not that great to be honest but i am moving seven i do go quick hmm so let's go to mon calamari instead so one two three four five five yeah, we'll just stop at Mon Calamari. Um, I think I'm just going to buy this. Oh, there's, a, there's the Kessel run. I need influence, don't have. Strength, yeah. Oh, no, I do have influence. I've got influence. I've got strength. I don't have tactics. I don't have knowledge. I don't have piloting. Could do the Kessel run. Ten grand and two fame. Or oh, there's Boshek. Yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that bounty. So we have a bounty to fight Boshek. Now we've got to find him. Um, reveal a new card. Uh, the huts move four. Where are the huts? The huts are here. One, two, three, four. And then as my encounter, I am going to look here and it is, it is IGRM droid. Card number 15. Tell you what, Boshek's probably here, isn't he? Right, it's an IGRM droid. This bodyguard and enforcer droid works for uh, Cicatro Visago, but with a little reprogramming, it could work for you. If you have negative syndicate reputation, I do, test stealth. Yeah, don't have stealth. Not very stealthy. Nope, failed. Uh, if you fail, your character suffers two damage, which means I'm defeated, I lose my money, my turn is over. Boo. If you have that or that, you may test tech if you pass, get that. Oh, that's pretty good. Can't have that there. Can't have nice things. Okay. Uh, Jin's go. So she's got two jobs on the board. One at Nell Hutter, one at Baboon. So she moves towards... Can she move? Yes, yeah, she can move. Yeah, so she's moving six. One, two, waves to me. Three, four, five, six. Wood stopping there or there, stop on a planet. No. So it doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do that, doesn't do any of that. And that's it. Okay, my go. I stand up. I remove all of my damage. It's a shame the ship didn't have any damage, although I don't have seven grand. Okay, which means I can't move. So I don't want to encounter the IGRM droid. What about Ponda Baba? Where's he gone? We removed him earlier on. Here he is. Do we want him back? Where's the Ponda Baba card? Is that that one? That's that one. Yeah, so we'd have to pay three grand to get him back on our side. So we don't want that. So we don't want either of those contacts. I can't move. I can't really buy anything because I don't have any money. So I think we're just going to have a card. We're going to have a Mon Calamari card. Special ability for doing your goal. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, in fact, W1LE says I can perform the market action even through a nav point. Oh, right. Nice. So yeah, I could have discarded one of my crew to recover all damage from my character and ship. I could have done that. Never mind. Right, Mon Calamari. Oh, I've got a secret. So there are secret cards in this game. Um, refugees on many Imperial worlds are seeking a better life elsewhere. So as an action, if I'm on an Imperial planet, I can gain the cargo above. Right, okay. So I keep that card as a secret card. Secret squirrel card. Um, and that's my encounter. Yeah, okay, done. Jins go. Uh, nope, move towards nearest goal. So she moves to Nal Hutter. If at cargo destination, deliver it. No, buy a ship. She can't buy a ship because she only has two grand. So she's going to cycle the ship to the bottom, even though we know that she's not going to be able to buy the Fire Spray 31 patrol craft, which is slave one, basically. Encounter step. Uh, if negative, no, not with the patrol. Job destination. So she completes, she does a favor for the syndicates. Uh, so she gains 5,000 credits and a syndicate reputation. Ooh, look at that. She's, everybody loves her. I don't. If you already had that and that, you would get this and that instead. Right, okay. So that goes there. Done. My go. We need to move. We need to go somewhere. We need to, we need to do something. We need to find... Boshek or Mazka Kanata. So I can move seven now. I've got a quick ship. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It wouldn't be there. So I'll go to Nal Hutter. That's not there anymore. Okay, so I'm going to Nal Hutter. Um, market phase. Again. Do I want to do in the mar anything in the market phase? Do we know where Greedo is? We know where Greedo is. There. So I could actually take this bounty for Greedo and get rid of the one from Boshek in instead. Although these are both quite good. But that's better. So Greedo needs to go to Ord Mantel. Which is all the way over here. So that's further away. I think I might just keep these. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep these. I don't think I'm going to buy anything armor-wise, um, market-wise. And there is cargo here, but I can't buy the cargo on Nell Hutter. And I don't have any money anyway. So, yeah, no market phase. Not going to do anything. We're going to have an encounter with this, and it is Chewbacca. I wasn't a very good impression. I do better. In his long life, Chewbacca has learned many useful skills. You couldn't ask for a better ally. If you are Han Solo, you may gain the crew below. Otherwise, you may spend 4,000 credits to gain the crew below and discard Chewbacca's token. He's got piloting, strength. He gives, yeah, really good. Really good. But I haven't got the money. Four grand? Yeah. There's a question. Can can you... I know you can barter when you're buying from the market. Can you barter when you need cash for those? I assume not. But it's worth asking. Right, Jin. He's moving towards Naboo. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't get there. Can't get there, so stops there. Doesn't do any of that. Doesn't do any of that. Doesn't do that. Doesn't do that. Doesn't do that. Hasn't got 8,000, so can't buy a fame. Nice. That gets discarded. That gets discarded. There's loads of these, and we're not buying anything from here. <laughs> it's really, really expensive. I'd have thought there'd be more of these. Right, that's that card done. That gets shuffled in. Uh, my go. We're still looking for... Maz Kanata or Boshek? 
so we'll go to Tatooine. And I won't buy anything. Yeah, I'm just really short of money. Oh, hang on a minute. Wasn't there a... Yeah, I can, I can gain this if I go to an Imperial planet. Naboo's an Imperial planet. And there is a green token there. So maybe I'll go to Naboo. Now, where is this cargo going? Takadana. So yeah, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beat you. Right, okay. And then, because I'm at Naboo, I am going to uh, speak to the refugees and basically gain refugees' cargo. They need to go to Takadana. Um, I'm not going to buy anything. But then I am going to encounter this. And it is Leia. Now, I said this game's really thematic and there's loads going on. Why Leia is here, I don't know. <laughs> Monica's here. Hi, Monica. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Rob says, it's quarter past one in the morning. Oh, you're in Australia. Of course we are. Yeah. Yeah, get some bed. Watch the rest tomorrow. And I'll be doing Undaunted North Africa in... What time is it? Four o'clock. Four hours time. You'll be asleep then. So five o'clock your time, I'll be doing Undaunted North Africa. But thank you very much, Rob, for your support. And I hope you sleep well. Right, so Princess Leia. Yeah, what she's doing out all the way here on Naboo, who knows? Leia Organa. In a time of fear, we have only one weapon left, hope. Fortunately, that is all that we require. If you have positive or neutral rebel reputation, yep, they love me, you may discard Leia Organa's token and gain the job below. I can't. I haven't got space for a job. <sighs> but it's a good job. It's a rebel prison break. I've done that before in one other game. That was cool. Right, that is me done, I believe. Yeah, that is me done. Yeah, you can only barter when buying cards in the market. Okay, thought so. She's been captured by the Imperials and taken to the base on Naboo. Yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah. And then she's she's got free, I guess. It could be. Yeah. I mean, I can understand characters like, you know, Boshek, IG-88 and all of that lot here. But it's like, where, where's this? What's here? You know, because that's the outer rim of the galaxy. Surely there's all of this stuff as well. And Coruscant would be here. Whose go is it? It's Jin's go. Um, she's moving to Naboo. Nope, nope, nope. If cargo slot's full, nope. Otherwise, buy that. So she buys that for a grand. Uh, the cargo wants to go to Nal Hutter, which is here. Uh, we reveal a new card, and the Imperial Patrol moves four. Where is the Imperial Patrol? Here. Can it get to her? Yes. One, two, three, four. Uh, then the Imperials don't like me, so that's bad. But I can move away from them, so that's okay. Um, and then encounter step. If at a job destination, complete it. Yes, she has a job to do on Naboo. And she gets 15,000 credits. See, this is where the imbalance comes in in the solo game. This card is really hard to do. But it's worth a lot more. Whereas for the AI, she just does it simply. So there you go. If we were playing to 10, she would have won. Although I did start her on 1. So she gets 15,000 credits. That's massive. And that is a one job. So some of the cards are removed from the game when they're done. Some of them are, they go back in there. But that's a removed from game. Um, there you go. So she did the job. That is, doesn't have any of the, oh no, she's got some cargo for Nal Hutter. Right, my go. We need to leave here because if we stay here, we're going to get attacked by the Imperials because they don't like me. Um, so we will regret not taking that job to kill Greedo and we're going to go to Takadana and we're going to deliver yeah oh so if you if you discard this card without delivering it you lose a reputation that's thematic yeah I like that so I gain one fame and one rebel reputation I can't have the rebel reputation but I'm now on five fame and that just goes back Okay, so there were some refugees there that needed taking home. So we've done that. Um, that was cargo. Market action. I have no money. Again, never seem to have any money. 
Yeah, I mean, I delivered refugees. Of course, they're not going to pay me. <laughs> just It's just fame. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to do anything for the market phase. Maybe I'll cycle the ship away so that Jin doesn't buy the ship. Okay. And now we're going to explore and we're going to have this one. And it is... Oh. It's not Mazkananta. Oh, I should have I should have played the odds. I should have worked out. Oh, there's still so many yellow ones out there. I'm going to spend the entire game hunting for these bounties. I guess this is a slight disadvantage with solo, because if we were playing four player, a lot of these tokens would be face up by now. So you'd know exactly where your bounty was. Um, she's on safari going baboon watching. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so Dengar is number eight. Who is Dengar? Let's find out. Uh, Dengar has a fearsome reputation and decades of experience. You can only hope that you're not the bounty he's after. If you have at least one negative reputation, I do. Fight a ground combat against Dengar. He's got five. But I also have five. Okay. So I've rolled one, two, three, four. I can flip that to five with that. Six. So I've rolled six damage. Take that, Dengar. Dengar attacks me for five. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. However, my special ability uh, means that each of my opponent's damage criticals counts as one damage instead of two. So he's actually only dealt me five damage. Only five damage. So I'm defeated. I'll remember my ability in a minute because I might use it. Wow, what a bloody fight that was. Um, if you win, gain one fame and discard Dengar's token. I did win. Just. Okay, but now I'm defeated. When you would become defeated, you may discard one of your crew to recover all damage. So we're going to get rid of W1 LE because I don't want to miss a turn. Uh, so W1 LE, I mean, I can pick him up again. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick him up again if we want him. So W1 LE goes here. Okay. Take as many illegal goods cargo as you can and gain points and money while searching the outer rim for bounty. Yes. Monica's channeling the try guys. Yep. No fancy Star Wars tray. No. No, no fancy Star Wars tray. I did consider a tray, but because the game's taking up a lot of table space, um, yeah, a dice tray would have been would have been even more space. I just noticed some mess here. Sorry about the mess. Tidy that up. There we go. It's a bit cleaner. That's it. I think that's my go done. Yeah, right. Jin's go. Um, has she got any... Yeah, she wants to go to Nal Hutter. And she can get to Nal Hutter. So she goes to Nal Hutter and delivers the cargo and gets a hut reputation and 5,000 credits. Yeah, I think she's going to win. That goes to the bottom of the deck. Is she going to buy anything? Oh, was it illegal? It was not illegal. It's just food supplies. So then she buys uh, a job, which is the Kessel Run. There's no way she'd be able to do the Kessel Run. Rebel ship moves three. One, two, three. Um, and then encounter step. She spends 8,000 credits to buy one fame. So she's on 11. We are almost game over. Yeah. As soon as she does the Kessel Run, it's going to be game over. And there's no way I'm going to get six fame before she does. Because I'm just... I should say, I'm searching... The, I'm wasting a lot of time searching the galaxy for my bounties. Um, whereas, yes, I should have been picking up... The problem is the money situation. Because I spent too much of my money on buying nice toys. I don't have any money to be buying the crew. Other, uh, the cargo. Otherwise, I'd have been buying the cargo and delivering it whilst flying around the galaxy. Yeah. 
Uh, what kind of AI opponent is it? It's, uh, and it's an AI opponent where you draw a card and you do everything it says on the card. But it's actually, it, it's one that I can manage. I'm not having any difficulty with, with following it. So it's actually quite smooth, very smooth. Uh, does that flip the IG card back over? I don't believe so. I think once you've done your personal goal, you flip it over. You don't you don't lose the ability. Um, yeah, don't think you do. So my go. Yeah, I'm 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 just going looking, aren't I? Um, where was that job for Greedo? That was that was somewhere else. Yeah, we just need money. Um, and it's actually not that easy to get money from from having no money. That's that's where I've come unstuck in this game. It's been great. I've really enjoyed it. But what can I do at the Ring of Catherine? Buy buy fame and get mods. Yeah, we're just going to go to the uh, uh, the Ring of Catherine. Um, we're not going to cycle any cards. I mean, I could get rid of my heavy blaster pistol for some coaxium crystals and then and then sell it on Ryloth. But no, not going to. And then we're just going to search this, and it is you no know, same again. It is not who I'm looking for. It is Hondo Onaka. Okay, so Hondo Onaka. Uh, ha ha, my friend. With my brains and your ahem, capital, why we will both be rich. You may spend three thousand credits to gain the crew below and discard his token. Okay, can't do that. Jin's go. Uh, does Jin have any goals? Yes, Kessel. Jin wants to go to Kessel to do the Kessel run. Um, so she moves towards the closest goal. And uh, she's moving six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, can't do any of that, 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 can't do any of that. Done. I think I've got one more turn. <laughs> so we're going to go... Um, Yeah, we're going to go to here. I'm not going to buy anything from the market. And we're going to search. And we found, finally, we have found Maz Kanata. So uh, rather than resolving the token, I'm going to have a fight. I got five. So I've rolled three hits. That can become a hit because of my vibro knife. And then I'm going to use my ability to re-roll this. Five hits. So I've done five damage. Uh, Maz Kanata rolls. Oh, that is in that is in that is insane. Look at that. Well, that's that summed up the game. Now, thankfully, because of K2SO, all of these only count as one. What did I get? Did I get five damage? I think I got five damage, didn't I? Because she's got five damage as well. Which means I actually did win. Yeah, I mean that that's crazy those rolls. So I take five damage, but my question is, did I get five damage? Did I do five damage as well? Which means I'm gonna discard the crew and put K2SO on the planet and I'm gonna capture Maz. If I did five. Yeah, I'm missing the roll one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did get five damage. So I did win the fight. So I have captured. I mean, I could just I could just eliminate her and get five grand and two fame because it's still two fame. But if I do capture her, I go here and that's 15 grand and two fame. It, it, it doesn't matter, to be honest, because I think I think next turn, Jin gets to 12 fame and wins. So I'm actually going to eliminate Maz Kanata to get the two fame. So the, evict so, the, so the loss isn't as embarrassing as it could have been. I want to play this again. This has been brilliant. Really enjoyed it. We've lost all my crew because I've sacrificed them to stay alive. Uh, and then it is Jin's go. Jin moves to Kessel. There's no point in me buying any of the stuff because basically there is a job destination. She completes the Kessel run and she gets two fame and wins. There you go. So it was a lot harder than I thought. 
12 fame, actually 13, um, and I only got eight. Again, for those people that are just joining recently, which is Monica, um, you're supposed to only play to 10, but I decided I wanted to play the longer game today. Uh, and even if I had have started Jin on zero, because uh, I started Jin on one just to increase the difficulty a bit, even if I had have started on zero, the Kessel run is worth two fame, I believe. Yes, it is. And 10 grand. Well, this has been brilliant. I've really enjoyed this. So a huge thank you to all of my patron supporters that support the channel. Uh, I'm basically doing one, two, three, four, five, six streams this weekend. None of them are sponsored. They're all purely funded through the Patreon. So if you're watching this stream, obviously, please give the video a like. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you've enjoyed it. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, obviously, and click that little notification bell so that you do get notifications of any future videos. Um, but all the videos I'm doing this weekend have only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So if you like the content that I create and you are able to spare a few dollars a month, then please check out the Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And one of the things that my Patreon supporters do is they, um, they vote on the games that I'm going to be playing. So this was a game which was on my list to play, uh, but it was voted on by my Patreon supporters. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much for voting on a game that I have thoroughly enjoyed playing. I would definitely play this again solo. Sure, it's got a random element. It's got dice rolling. It's got that. This is so thematic. This is a game a little bit like Marvel Champions last night where, you know, we won or we lost. It doesn't matter. Playing the game itself is the enjoyable part of this game. And I think this is why, uh, this is one reason why my gaming tastes have evolved over the years. Ten years ago, I would be playing you know, medium to heavy or heavy crunchy euros where you have to sit there and work out the maths and do this and do that. I enjoy those games, okay? Don't get me wrong. I enjoy those games and I enjoy playing those games. But this game is probably more enjoyable to play because it's cool, right? I'm in the Star Wars universe. Universe. I'm meeting the Star Wars characters and those Euro games where you're spending money converting resources and everything else, as I say, I like them, but generally speaking, they don't have any theme. This game is full of theme. Every card that you come across, every bit of, and I'm not talking flavor text, I'm talking, you know, a card that says, oh, you've met another bounty hunter, check your reputations. If one of them is negative, then the bounty hunter attacks you. Well, thematically, or test your stealth to see if you hide from him. Every card has got has got flavour in it, and that just makes the experience of playing a game, uh, yeah, good. Fantasy Flight Games production, really nice graphic design artwork, pretty clear rule book, yeah, really enjoyable. So we're all done. Will I be backing it up with Revenge of the Armadillo? Yes, that'll be episode two, Revenge of the Armadillo. <laughs> Flashburn twenty twelve has joined in just to see me lose. I tell you what. As far as I'm concerned, I, I'm the winner here because I've, I've had a really good afternoon playing a game that I really like. I would love to play this game at three and four players, probably three to be honest, but it would be a four or five hour game and there'd be quite a bit of downtime when it's not your turn. Although playing solo, even running the other player's turn is kind of a bit like downtime and you can plan ahead. You know, when it's not your turn, a little bit, you can go, all oh, right, on my next turn, I know where I want to go. And you can have a look at the board and you can have a think. And I didn't actually have that time to think today because I was running the AI and I'm looking at the stream. I kind of wasn't able to just take a little bit of a mental break to look at the situation and look at what I was trying to do. I've definitely learned a lot. I've definitely learned not to spend all your money on expensive, nice toys. You need money to buy cargo to then make more money. And if you end up constantly in a situation that I was in with no money, then you've you've nothing to start that ball rolling. Um, so yeah, definitely did, definitely learn from that. And that was probably my biggest undoing because that would have meant I could have had a cycle of money coming around. Um, yeah, anyway, so we're all done. Um, the other thing I was gonna mention when talking about the Patreon, uh, if you are interested, if you are a Patreon supporter of mine, you have access to the Slack channel. I often do a lot of behind the scenes videos um, as well. I do extra playthroughs, which are Patreon only. So this week, for example, I've actually done three Marvel Champions playthroughs, which were for Patreon only. Um, and yeah, I might do another, I'm not gonna do it now um, because I've got other stuff to do today. Um, but I might be doing some more Patreon only streams 
this weekend. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see. But this was really enjoyable. I will be back tonight uh, at 8 o'clock UK time with a couple of games of Undaunted North Africa uh, played over Tabletop Simulator. So if you're interested in watching either of those games, uh, that will be happening tonight. And yeah, that's everything. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. It's been great to have you here in the chat. Thank you very much for the rules help with the bits where I needed it. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.